Terios kid. Is that like a kid who like is half terrier? And OMG, if I wanted to, I could invest in everybody's favorite Gran Turismo car. A Skyline GTR. Oh, I could really invest. I got a lot of cars to sell, man. Ooh. Ooh, I got the previous version. Ooh. It's a pretty nifty CRX you got there, honestly. I would just like to point out that horsepower rank rating there. And the fact that that series had a 98 horsepower limit. Here's your prize car, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can't use it. <laughs> oh, we got you good. That car was heavier by a little bit. It was uglier than a little bit. Uh, does this count as a Civic, I'm wondering? And I think we can sell our Lupo. Make some money. Are you up to 62 grand? Let's go see if we can afford the one, the only, the Vector. No. We're just a couple of, couple of zeros short. Just a couple. But, let's see here. What else do we got? Let's take a look. Browse the shopping menus. See what we got, man. Can't afford a Viper yet. That's a shame. Nothing but crappy American cars here because this was the 90s and we didn't build any cars that were worth a darn. Totally know I can't afford that. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Then I asked myself, would I drive a Mustang? Would I drive a Mustang? The answer is no. Now, but if there is something I would drive, Corvette ZR1 from 1995. You want to talk about an awesome car right there, man. I mean, really, 1995. It isn't just any car. That's the 95 ZR1. And yeah, Plymouth. They existed. They were a thing back when Gran Turismo 2 came out. Uh, which ugly car manufacturer would I like to visit today? None of them. None of them. That would be the correct answer. Really, I'm just kind of shopping around here. Showing you all the awesome cars, such as the Lister Storm. That looks like it has 15-inch rims. Probably because it actually does. Which is quite hilarious when your car is called the Lister Storm. You can never go wrong with a TVR. Ever. You just can't. You just cannot go wrong with a TVR. Uh, you can go wrong with anything relating to Moonraker, which they got Moonraker black, and then they got this yellow color that just says Moonraker. Apparently, TVR was obsessed with Moonraker, and that's probably why they do not exist. Yeah, you guys kind of deserved it, to be honest. This Moonraker sucks. Two hundred thirty-four horsepower from a four-liter. <laughs> Does it pull stumps from the ground? Two eighty-five. That's a little bit more respectful. I'm thinking we should probably three fifty two thousand five hundred. Ooh, this is the one to have, man. You want the four point five? You don't want no speed six. 
because we all know that horsepower and weight determines everything about a car. Anything else? Oh yeah, by the way, most awesome car in the history of awesomeness. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? 800 horsepower, 2100 pounds, looks totally ridiculously stupidly awesome. Yeah, awesome. Seriously, how do you not like TVR? If you have a soul, you like TVR. You just have to. It totally makes zero sense at all, but it makes perfectly good sense. Hey guys, we got an engine here, but it's only a it's only a six cylinder. Oh good. We'll just put them together and make a twelve cylinder and then we'll make them have insane amounts of horsepower. Problem solved. And fun fact, no imp cars in Gran Turismo 2. At all. Talk about a disappointment. Talk about a disappointment, indeed. Uh, Mr. Martin. Way expensive. Yeah. $38,000 DB6 here, and this <laughs> is the working here in the showroom, I guess. Well. Okay, so nothing really there. Let's go over to Japan, because you can always find something good in Japan. The greatest car in the history of mankind, according to video games. And that'd be every video game. Uh, because it is the greatest car in the history of all kind. Skyline GTR R34, oh my gee, oh god, my pants need changed. Freaking silly, man. It's, it's freaking silly. I like the GTR, I like it, man, but... God. People on YouTube, man. Oh my god, just the fact that I badmouth the GTR even slightly, they're gonna flip out, they're gonna be all like, why? Why do you not like the GTR? It makes like 7,000 horsepower when tuned, and it will outrun like a Bugatti Veyron, because the Bugatti Veyron's such the most amazing car in the history of mankind, because it totally doesn't go around corners, because it totally doesn't weigh four tons. Did I get my point across? <laughs> okay. 2,800 pounds. Yes, I'm going to buy another RX-7 because the RX-7 is awesome. Okay, Especially these types of RX-7s because they're awesome. Okay, I just like them. Deal with it. Innocent Blue. That car is innocent until proven awesome. Oh wait, it's now guilty. Ooh, decisions, 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 because you can't change your paint job later unless you get a racing modification. We're gonna go with the innocent blue. I'm sure someone's like, oh, you're supposed to buy the Type RS because the Type RS is superior in this way, in this form. Just in case I say, cool. I don't know that. That's why I bought the Type R. Because it can get up to 502 horsepower. Fun fact, all the turbos are supposed to make a difference, but uh, as a kid I never understood that, so I always put the biggest turbo on. And you people out there who played Gran Turismo 2 as well, as well as Gran Turismo 1, did that as well, and don't try and hide it, because that's what everybody did. That is a terrible color combination. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, it's pretty tasty. We're definitely going to have to go with this one. Providing we can save up to $85,000 if I can, you know, not spend all that much money. Also, another little fun fact, racing modification doesn't instantly make your car a race car. It just changes the paint job and lightens it up a little bit more. Uh, so... Yeah, there's a reason I'm still buying parts. Hey, what? There's no racing suspension? I never noticed that. The more money you spend, the better it is automatically. That's the way I play. Although, don't tell me he's in four professionals. You'll just be going now. Brakes. Always need brakes. 
cannot go wrong with brakes. Unless they're bad brakes. Bad brakes are never good. Never, ever, ever, ever good. The more fly the wheel, the more better. Okay. We have now got a car that is going to destroy... Going to destroy the Clubman Cup. And yes, I could have done this like a while ago, but... Just felt like it. We'll get to see how much the AI cheats here. I think, again, I remember the Clubman Cup having a couple of... Faster cars like that TBR. OMG Skyline. Yeah! Yeah, I fear my RX-7 that is made out of 12 polygons. Yeah, now is the time indeed. That guy has got it right, even though the start was 18 seconds ago at this point. Hard to imagine that this series now takes itself way over the top seriously. Bounce off a wall in Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 2? Who cares? Nobody. You like lose like maybe a mile per hour. Maybe. At most. And I looped it. That's embarrassing. Except for the fact that I did it on purpose, that way my opponents have a chance. Because I'm very kind like that. I mean, seriously, you hit stuff in Gran Turismo 1 and 2, nothing happens. Now you do it in, you know, Gran Turismo 3, or, which I guess Gran Turismo 4 was the first one to do it, as far as I can remember. You got those stupid slowdown penalties in some of the events. It's like, that's one of the reasons I hate Forza. They got that stupid gravel that slows your car down to, like, 2 miles an hour. It's like, I don't care if someone cuts the track like that, you know, because they're a douchebag and they'll probably kicked from the server anyways, from the lobby, you know, in an instant, because nobody likes racing with that guy, unless everybody's doing that. So, don't make it so that way if I touch the grass, my car instantly spins out because one side of my car is doing 5 miles an hour and the other car's side of the car is doing 105 miles an hour. Drives me up the wall, man, honestly. It's my number one pet peeve. Stop. Doesn't make for a fun game. You don't want people to cut the corner, put a tire wall there. I think I need better tires. Super serious racing simulation, guys. Remember, this is the real driving simulator. Yep, straight into a wall, don't care. Nobody does. Because nobody does. And nobody should. I'm almost kind of embarrassed I didn't buy a TVR because apparently I'm getting beat by a TVR. Apparently RX-7 does not mean TVR. Television racing. Is that what it stands for? Total victory racing. You totally have to have like flames on your car. Oh, that's brave on the brakes right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. No. But we're good. Yeah! Yeah! Winning races in the Clubman Cup. Most challenging series in the world. Seriously, did you see that competition? There's a Clio, Jaguar, and here comes the. Hmm? That was kind of weird. Here comes the British to complain how I just said Jaguar.
Grindelwald. AKA the track you race on like five times in the entire game. Pretty sure the only track that shows up less than this is the one, the only Rome Knight. Which I don't think you race that anywhere. Hopefully the auto control off line. Okay, this race is totally mine. RX-7 is built for this course. Tight, twisty roads. Honed on the mountains of Japan. They didn't need the Nürburgring because they had the Japan Nürburgring. Thank you, Mitchell, here. Because they have Fujimi Kaido. Right? Tell me that's right, Empty Box. No. No, not at all. Oh, and hey, more Rob Zombie. Apparently, apparently they think that if you drive an RX-7, you must love Rob Zombie. Oh god, this chicane, and I always thought that said caution buffalo ahead. I can't tell what those pixels are supposed to indicate, but I'm just kind of guessing they're saying buffalo ahead. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the AI definitely cheats. All that and running into a wall, like at a 45 degree angle, does actually slow you down because it's the game's way of saying, hey, stupid, learn how to drive. I how if you brake and turn at the same time in this game, you basically like spin out like crazy. But it's like not in the realistic sense, it's like in a very weird manner. Maybe that's because to get a car to spin in this game you have to like totally be a buffoon. Tell you, Iger Nordwand has nothing on this track in the beauty department. Nothing at all. This is so beautiful. I feel like I'm in Switzerland right now. It's so visually stunning, visually immersive. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. If you're not like shedding a tear of joy at how awesome this game looks, there's something wrong with you. It's freaking Gran Turismo 2, man. Pretty terrible competition there, to be honest. Kind of disappointed with myself. Should have lapped the field in a two lap race. I like that that noise that plays when you're getting your money. Just makes you feel successful, you know. I'm sure when Donald Trump goes to the bank, you know, to cash his paycheck from himself at his own bank that he owns, <laughs> I'm sure that noise plays as well. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I mean, if I was a billionaire, that's that's why I get. Wow. Wow. I have a field day here. Make this as quick as possible. I think actually this is probably going to be my last race because it's it's about time to call it a night of Gran Turismo in this. And this is a good song to end it with too. 
yeah. I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about the music because YouTube will kill me, but it's awesome. Because uh, a supersonic boom will hit you in three seconds. Oh yeah, we are definitely, definitely getting better at this game I'm using D-pad awesomeness. <laughs> it's all or nothing, baby. Look at that! I just in a real car that would have just probably like ripped off the left front suspension. Grand Turismo 2. <laughs> oh hey, you hit the wall. That's cool. Yeah, we really don't care. I mean, yeah, sure, the controls are terrible, and that's why it is the way it is. I mean, it's really hard to not bounce off of stuff in this game, because you either get full control or no control. But, come on. Ah! Just kicking the rear end out just to brag a little bit. Let's swerve over here and get my invisible pit crew, you know, high fives. Yeah, we won the race, guys! Just don't jump across the pit wall and pull a Colin Chapman because I can't drive in a straight line and I'll probably hit you. Which I'm pretty sure has actually happened. Which, boy, what a way to celebrate. Oh, you just ran over the guy on your team. No es bueno. And I probably should have saved there, but uh, anyways, that's that. That's uh, that's this session in the books. Nonetheless, let's see if we got anything else. I don't think we got any prize cards or anything like that, but this music is the bomb. It is awesome. Actually, to tell the truth, um, I was at work the other day, and all of a sudden I found myself going, do doom do doom do do Doom, doom. Out of nowhere, I'm like, oh my god. I still remember that? I'm sure we've all had those moments before where we just suddenly have a video game epiphany and just freak out because we still remember some insignificant tune from somewhere. And suddenly, I should play that game right now. I need to stop everything I'm doing and play that game. And we all have that game, to be honest. Gran Turismo 2 just happens to be the best version of that game. No, seriously, Gran Turismo 2 is awesome. But uh, I'm going to end it here because I ain't got much more to say. So, see you guys next time as we're going to do some more butt-kicking of low-class cars. Just remember, we're one step closer to the Espace F1. And because people probably won't know what I mean by the Espace F1, you younger viewers out there. I'm sure a lot of you guys actually know about this. I hope you guys do. Oh, wrong city. Let's go to the West City. Where are they? Renault. Special Espace F1. <laughs> Driven by Fernando Alonso. <laughs> All joking aside, yes, that is what you see. An 800 horsepower, Formula One engine powered minivan of awesomeness. Yes, when I get $2 million, I will be purchasing myself an Espace F1. Bye bye.